Well, hello there. I like the Mother series. All three games. Even though I've been largely biased towards talking about one of the games over the other two. Regardless, one thing most of the fans of the series tend to undertake, as do most fans of any piece of fiction do often, is make theories about characters, events, and anything else about the series. Now, despite what the thumbnail of this video might insinuate, making theories about the Mother series isn't inherently a bad thing. One of the cool things about the Mother games is that, to an extent, there's an open-endedness to the world and its characters, but that's the thing, to an extent. More often than not, I, as well as many others, see theories that seem to disregard pre-established pieces of lore, or otherwise are brain-shattering in terms of logical leaps need to be taken in order for these theories to have any semblance of cohesion. In this video, I'll go over two different categories of Mother Series theories. The first is just general theories, anything and everything about the series. The second is the Ness Is category, which can be defined as any theory with a title that begins with Ness Is. One thing I won't be covering in this video, however, are any theories relating to Cut Mother 3 and pre-release content and information. Because, one, there's enough material regarding pre-release Mother 3 theories that it could be its own separate video, and two, if you want Cut Mother 3 content theories, there's already enough of them on my channel. I've purposely decided to not link back any of these theories to the users who initially posted them, since there's no reason to link back theories to the people who wrote them and potentially throw shade their way. That's not the point of this video. Anyways, I'll make sure to rate each theory a 1 through to 10 on this sanity chart to show the most plausible and reasonable theories at a 1 and the most mind-numbing and logic-breaking ones at a 10. Enough with the rambling, on to the first theory. Gygus Fetus Theory Now to start off is an odd one. Inherently, this is not a bad theory at all. It only makes it into the list for the fact that this one was actually debunked by Shigesatu Itoi, something that doesn't happen too often with Mother Theories. Okay, so quick note, while doing research for this video, I found Itoi didn't directly say anything like, the Gygus Fetus Theory isn't canon. It's more so people paraphrased him talking about what actually inspired the Gygus battle in Mother 2, and ran with the assumption that meant this fetus theory couldn't be true at all. It probably still isn't at all, but it's something to think about. Anyways, the basis of this theory is that since you're traveling back in time and earthbound to kill Gygus, you're actually killing him as a fetus before he's born to erase him from existence in the future. Some circumstantial evidence that is cited is usually that the cave leading up to where you fight Gygus represents the PUSSY of a woman, and inside looks like internal organs, so that would be the womb. And also, the shape of Gygus at one point is the outline of a baby too. But yeah, it's not what any of this is supposed to be at all, since Itoi essentially deconfirmed this. To put this in the words of the AVGN though, But I still think one of the artists might have put the baby in there, because it's the shape of a baby. That's the only thing that's clear. One last thing worth mentioning is that while I was doing my research, I was alerted that, quote, Gygus is a minor in the first game and an adult in the second game according to Itoi, which was apparently said by him on a late night talk show around the time of Mother 2's release. Obviously, it's hard to say if this information actually points away from the fetus theory or not, since you travel back in time to kill Gygus in Earthbound anyway. With all of this info, I'd give this a sanity scale rating of 3 out of 10. Not a bad theory, but we know what Itoi wanted this final battle to convey, and you can't really say it was for it to be a fetus in a womb. Buzz Buzz is Ninten from the future. Here we go, our first X is Y character theory. Basically, the basis of this theory is that the ending to Earthbound Beginnings implies that Ninten has another journey to go on, and because of that, it could plausibly mean that he somehow gets into a 15 year long war with Gygus, and goes back 10 years in time to tell Ness that he's the chosen one. Kinda weird when you really think about it, huh? You're telling me this kid turned into a bee or a rhinoceros beetle or whatever the fuck? How? The ending of Mother 1 anyway is supposed to be a tease towards the planned sequel about Ninten, Anna, Lloyd, and Teddy, traveling a space that never materialized after they decided they wanted Mother 2 to essentially be a soft reboot of the series. Maybe this theory could have some merit if it didn't involve Ninten turning into a little, tiny, stupid fucking bee. Since when could Ninten time travel anyway? This definitely gets a 6 out of 10 on the sanity meter. It's mind shattering. But not completely so, like some of the other theories on here. Porky is innocent. Next up is one I think varies in terms of believability. 
Basically what this theory is, is that Porky and Earthbound and Mother 3 is a sympathetic villain because he was possessed or corrupted by Gygus into being evil. I can understand where this theory comes from, but ultimately I feel like it falls flat when you consider what they were going for with Porky in terms of his role in Mother 3. In that game, he's depicted largely as very passively destructive, just doing whatever he wants and commanding his army to bend the Nowhere Islands to his will, creating abominable creatures, hurting others that defy his way, brainwashing, but ultimately, it's all because he can't let go of the past, and is so set on clinging onto what there once was. It sort of doesn't have anything to do with Gygus. Gygus is never referenced in Mother 3 once, it's all about Porky's obsession with himself and his idolized view of what his past was like. To say he's innocent of his crimes he commits in Mother 3 because of influence from the Demiurge seems like such a weird misinterpretation of the character. One point as well this theory has is that Porky had abusive parents, and because of that he's a lot more sympathetic in terms of his backstory. I'm aware this is a sensitive sort of thing to discuss, and while I do think it's important to consider someone's upbringing when considering their actions as they grow older, having abusive parents isn't an excuse for being a bad person and doing bad things. Porky certainly isn't the only character in the Mother series to have not so great parents. Look at Duster. His dad is verbally abusive to him, and despite that, Duster is a kind and helpful person. So while it is something to consider for Porky that he didn't have the best upbringing, it doesn't excuse the fact that he took a dead child and turned him into a militaristic robot slave. Jesus. This theory gets a 5 on the sanity scale. Not a terrible theory, but I'd say it ends up having a lack of understanding of key themes and plot points of Mother 2 and 3. Anna dreamed of Ness. Here's a really odd one. Back on Earthbound Central, Clyde Tomato Mandolin posted a theory about something from Mother 1. As you may know, in Mother 1, Anna dreams about seeing a boy that finds her missing hat that she is destined to journey with to find her mother, and that boy happens to look like Ninten. Basically, the wording of her dialogue doesn't specify she's talking about Ninten specifically that she saw in her dream, but a boy who looks like Ninten. And who else is a boy that looks like Ninten? Why, Ness from Mother 2, of course. Yeah, obviously this theory isn't what the devs were intending at all, it's just looking into some dialogue way too far. Not to discredit Mado, but it is pretty silly of a theory. 8 out of 10. Teddy Dies In the original version of Mother 1 released in Japan in 1989, the ending is very basic. Once Gygus is defeated, you get a text crawl for the credits, and that's it. Because of this vagueness, it can be inferred that Teddy, who gets severely injured earlier in the story, may have died from his injuries. Well, not only is that incongruous with Mother 1's tone, and having him die off screen would be completely unnecessary, but in the prototype for the English localization of Mother 1, it's confirmed that Teddy recovered from his injuries and is living a healthy and happy life, now performing at the live house. Not only was this in the Mother 1 localization prototype, but subsequent re-releases of the game such as Mother 1 Plus 2 and the Wii U and Switch ports added this ending back into the Japanese version. So, the basis of this theory that he died originally is that the original Japanese ending was what was always intended. However, that's not the case. The full ending was always what was intended, but time constraints prevented the team from implementing it in. But when the localization was being worked on, the team had enough time to re-implement it. So, to summarize, Teddy was never supposed to die, some people were probably just looking into this too deeply. This will get a 6 out of 10 on the sanity scale. Nothing mind-numbing, but I can't say it's a very valid theory. Flint neglected Lucas. Hmm, I should be brief with this one as to not over-exacerbate. The basis to this theory is that since Flint in the final version of Mother 3 doesn't join you at all during chapters 4 through 8, he was neglecting Lucas. Well, chapters 4 through 8 take place over about only a couple of weeks at most. Just because Flint and Lucas didn't cross paths much at all, doesn't equate to him neglecting him for the entire 3 year gap between chapters 3 and 4. Logically, Flint would have been spending at least most of the day with Lucas, he was still caring for the sheep after all. Regardless, imagine if Flint hadn't been searching for class at all. Imagine instead he was at home all day too and Lucas was like, Dad, I miss Klaus! And Flint was like, too bad, son, he's dead, you'll never see him again. Okay, I'm going a bit overboard, but I made my point. Flint wasn't neglectful, saying two weeks in-game of him not showing up is equatable for his actions over three years is kind of silly. If only we had gotten Flint as a main character post-time skip to begin with, and we wouldn't even be having this discussion. 
I give this theory a 10 out of 10 on the sanity scale because God help me, let me just inject some personal bias into this video. And look, even my buddy Luke agrees. If you do not get why Mother 3 was in desperate need of more cowboy dad. You are stupid. Yes, I know. That's insulting, but it's also the truth. Shit. Wrong clip. Look, Flint might not be winning Father of the Year award anytime soon, but neglect? Come on now. Now we've reached the midway point of this video. The rest of these theories from here on out will have the prefix Ness is. And oh man, there's a lot of them. All I can say is, prepare yourself. Ness is the Garrickson baby. As written by a deleted user on Reddit, quote, The psychic Garrickson baby in Mother 1 that teaches Ninten how to teleport grows up to be Ness. The only real supporting evidence is that Earthbound takes place roughly 10 years later, which fits the time gap perfectly. But... The Garrickson baby is clearly a redhead. Well, there you go. Also, I do need to say, it'd be strange for Ness to have lived in Youngtown as a baby, then moved to Eagle Land when he got a bit older. The flashback to young Ness in Mother 2 implies he's always lived in Onet. However, a different user interjected to this theory and said, quote, Some people's hair colour change when they grow older. I was blonde when born, but my hair turned brown. Either that or Ness dyed his hair. Well, I guess that's reasonable enough, but honestly, if that's a crux you're gonna use for a theory, I think you're kinda stretching canon a lot. Anyway, this gets a 6 out of 10 on the sanity meter. This theory gets disproven before it can even get that bad. Ness's dad is the photo guy. Next up is Ness's dad is the photo guy. <laughs> this theory goes as follows. Due to the fact that he's always tracking Ness by the way of telephone, he has a fairly good idea as to where Ness is at a certain point in his adventure. So it makes sense that he can stop Ness periodically to take his photo if he knows where he is. And why wouldn't he? Ness's father obviously loves him enough to give him money and record his progress. Why not take a couple photos as well? It not only further serves a purpose in recording Ness's adventure, but it also offers an excuse for his dad to come visit him periodically. I think I may have also tried to tie in something involving all of the parents in the game, and how Ness's dad was actually one step ahead of him, leaving these presents behind for him to use, but eh, not so sure if that's as plausible. Of course, this is all based on a theory I wrote when I was a young Earthbound fan, so this all may just be very silly. The person that wrote this put this better than I could have. It is rather silly. I mean, if Ness's dad was following around Ness all day, how would he be earning money to be constantly depositing it into Ness's bank account? But ultimately, you can't really get upset or be too judgmental since this was something someone came up with when they were young. I'll give this a 4 out of 10. Ness's dad is Ninten. Well, this one is quite a rabbit hole. Essentially, this theory is that Ninten grew up to be Ness's dad and Anna grew up to be Ness's mother. Well, to be blunt, Mother 2 only takes place around a decade after Mother 1, at most. Ninten and Anna are 12 in Mother 1, and Ness is also 12 in Mother 2, so... This theory clearly doesn't work very well. A variant to this theory is that Lloyd also grew up to be Dr. Andronuts. Regardless of the whole idea of him having to have aged horribly, if that was the case, Dr. Andernuts is a terrible father and also not a great person either based on his actions in Mother 3. The idea that Lloyd would grow up to be like that is pretty depressing. I'll give this theory 9 out of 10 points. It's really pushing it when it comes to ignoring the canonically established timeline of the series, what little we do know about. Ness's dad is Ninten's dad. The premise of this theory is that Ninten's dad remarried at some point and had Ness later on than Ninten. And this would also explain Ness's black hair, PSI, the reason why both of their dads are always away, and why Ness goes after Gygus instead of Ninten in Mother 2. Well, uh, I guess. There's nothing that really disproves this, but I guess it does suggest that some crazy shit happened to Ninten's family after the events of Mother 1. Maybe Ninten's dad had a secret other family. And, uh, I don't know how to feel about that. This gets 2 out of 10 points. It's weird, but I can't really disprove it per se. Ness is Ninten. Let's quickly look back at the theory I had up before and... Ness's last name is Montague. This one is a doozy, so I think it'd be best to read mostly verbatim for this one. Let's begin. I do believe that Ness's full name is Ness Montague. Yes, as in George and Garado Montague, the gold miners from Dusty Dunes Desert. 
Though it might seem a bit surprising, it is far from being a mere wild guess, as I have many reasons to believe so. Well, let's see what those many reasons are. 1. Liar Exaggerate The first clue is given by Liar Exaggerate. Normally when you go see him after Buzz Buzz is killed, he'll lead you to the Mani Mani statue. However, if you wait until the Mani Mani statue is stolen by Everdread, Liar Exaggerate will say something to the effect of, I see you don't want to hang around, I understand. After all, we're not even related. Someone like you should hang around that dreamer, Gerardo Montague. Notice how he says it'd be more normal to be with your relatives, then immediately mentions Gerardo Montague. 2. The presence of Gerardo Montague. Another suspicious piece of evidence is that Gerardo Montague is in Saturn Valley when the phase distorter is completed. Dr. Antonuts is Jeff's father. Apple Kid helps you countless times, actually thrice. But what motivates Gerardo's presence? His help is nothing out of the extraordinary. So far, both these reasons have been pretty understandable, especially the first one. The way that dialogue from Liar Exaggerate is worded is pretty odd. The second one is a lot more circumstantial, but is a good point to bring up. I sure hope this theory doesn't take a 180 off the deep end. 3. George Montague Now for Gerardo Montague's brother, George. Doesn't that name sound familiar? That's right! That's the name of Nintendo's great-grandfather, assuming a relation between Ness, Ninten, and the Montague. It is easy to imagine that George Montague was in fact named after the infamous abductee. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Ignoring the fact that two names happening to sound similar isn't evidence of characters being related at all. Assuming a relation between Ness and Ninten? Okay, sure, that makes sense. Oh wait, it doesn't. I'm sorry man, but this theory went majorly off the rails. The fourth point is the meaning of Montag. Finally, Montag means Monday in German. That wouldn't make a lot of sense when applied to Gerardo, but it would take a whole new meaning when applied to Ness. Onet, the beginning of a journey, you get the picture. What does this one even mean? Monday is the beginning of a journey? Montague is related to the German word for Monday? What does that have to do with anything? I'm sorry, but for as decent as those first two points this theory has, it's very much ruined by those last two. Oh well. This gets an 8 out of 10. I feel like I lose my mind when I think about those two last points of this theory. Ness is the hot dog guy. Now this one is huge. Literally. If you look this up, you'll find a ginormous theory that goes into immense detail about all the evidence on why Ness is this guy. A random NPC in Mother 3 by Great Scale Beach that sells a few items, and then reappears in New Pork City. I feel like if I summarize this here I'll end up misrepresenting this theory, since there's so much to it. But beyond the surface level resemblance of Ness and the Hot Dog Guy, some of the points of this theory is that the Hot Dog Guy sells steak, which is Ness's canon favorite food, and that Porky's ultimate humiliation of Ness would be to make him into such an insignificant nobody, unaware of the hero he once was. Someone so bland and a part of the mob that it's laughable, with this being backed up by the fact that Mother 3 was originally a lot darker tonally. Even that description though I don't think does it justice. I'll be honest, I don't think this theory is canon. At all. It's so out there that I just can't help but think it's silly. This guy isn't Ness. I don't think the guy who Porky had a movie themed around. Artifacts preserved in a hall of memories and even his rebuilt childhood home in EB64 was someone he was also trying to humiliate. However, I can't not admire the amount of time and effort that would have been put into writing this theory. So, uh, this gets a, I don't know, out of 10 for sanity points. Sorry guys, I'm indecisive on this one. Ness is Flint. Well, uh, this is an interesting one. If you've seen my EB64 Iceberg Part 2, you already know what this theory is. Surely most people who see Flint in Mother 3 don't think of him as having looked like this at age 12. But I think what's really interesting for this theory is this. A quote from Itoi from an interview from 2006. Regarding the fan theory that Flint might be Ness, he says, quote, I figured even since the N64 version that there would be rumors like that. Talks about that came up among the development team, and I made it so that if people really thought that, they could go on thinking it if they liked. I tried to make it so people could think whatever they wanted to. In addition, it's said in this interview too that, quote, now that you mention it, Flint is always wearing that hat. The Flint equals Ness rumor might come from his ability to communicate with animals and the badge the Mr. Saddens cleaned for him. Well, this sure is interesting. You're free to believe this theory if you would like to. 
That's more than any of the other theories I've said previously have had. Besides those points of circumstantial evidence just said before, it must be noted too that in Earthbound 64, Flint was originally going to have PSI abilities, which Ness of course also has, and Hinawa was going to be blonde, which could contribute to the belief that she could also be polar too. As far as any definitive evidence that disproves this theory goes, uh, well, Ness has black hair and Flint has brown hair. Yeah, this theory sucks. It can't be easily disproven, and if you want to believe it's canon, you can. That sucks. We got so close to Ness and Porky finally battling again, I guess. I'll give this 2 out of 10 points. It'd get a lot closer to that insanity side if he toy didn't say what he did, I'll be honest. It's super interesting seeing what is essentially an officially endorsed Mother Series theory. I wonder what the theory next could be like. No, fuck you, I'm done. Actually, let me go over this, so I never ever need to go over this miserable farce of a theory ever again. This shit doesn't make sense. Are you really gonna look me in the eyes and tell me Ness got teleported to the underground, trapped with a Starman that he befriends inexplicably, and is also this wisecracking, talkative lazy bones when Ness is nothing like that in Earthbound? At least Flynn is pretty quiet like Ness is as well. What does Sans and Ness have in common? Seriously, Papyrus has the same symbol as a Starman does on his outfit, so that makes him a Starman? Jesus. Thanks MatPat for creating possibly one of the worst memes of the entire Mother fandom. This shit is 11 out of 10 man, I'm sorry. The only thing, and I mean the only piece of credence I can give this theory, is that if you look at it through the lens of Toby Fox's Earthbound Halloween hack, the Mother references might make sense. Maybe when he was working on Undertale, he did want to reference the Halloween hack, but I don't know. Regardless, Ness isn't Sans. This shit ain't funny anymore. End of story. I got more upset there than I usually do, huh? Sometimes it's therapeutic to talk about something that's been weighing on your mind for so long. What did I want to accomplish with this video? Honestly, it wasn't to put down anyone who wants to make Mother Series theories. This was just a fun look at some of them. Mostly. If there's one thing I hope people can take away from this video, it's that the Mother series has more depth than most video games. Shigesato Itoi truly was making something special with all of his games. With the amount of detail and intrigue he was putting into the world he created, and because of that, I say if you want to make Mother series theories, go out there and read interviews, think outside of the square, appreciate the finer details of every game, and you'll find greater appreciation for this series than you may have initially thought. Or at least, call your stuff headcanons and not theories. Calling something a headcanon I feel is somehow a lot less intrusive than calling it a theory. Next time I go back to Mother Series theories, I think I'll take a look at some of the pre-release Mother 3 theories from before the game came out. That'll be fun. But until then, thanks for watching, make sure to check out my links and other videos. Farewell.